started a, couple, you know, a few weeks ago, we were talking about the steps and the biblical foundation for uh, that kind of ties in with the steps, <coughs> the step work, uh, that everyone here should be engaged in. <laughs> I hope you're engaging and working the steps uh, because the steps, and, and if you're sitting there thinking like, well, I don't really have an addiction or I don't really need the steps, I know exactly what I need to do, uh, well then you're, you don't really understand what the steps are for. So the steps are not just for people in addiction. These are steps that are for anybody who's just, you know, trying to deal with life and life recovery and, and, the, and what life brings our way every day. And so we get challenged and on a daily basis with various things and uh, that happen in life um, that we find ourselves not being able to control. Things that are outside of our control. Uh, things that we have no power over. And that's why in step one, uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about step one about admitting our powerlessness, right? And so that's kind of where it all starts, right in that vein, that uh, understanding and admitting about our powerlessness. So before we go any further, <coughs> and then we'll get into today's lesson, and uh, we'll move from there. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks for today, and our Lord... Even though our hearts are burdened by so many different things, things outside of our control, things that we have no power over. Um, and Lord, sometimes you just allow things in our lives to help us understand that even more clearly and better. And so Lord, we just ask you to be with us in this service this morning. Uh, give us just even a, a, a just a, a brief <coughs> insight that we can, something that will help us to get through today and throughout this week. And so, Father, we are trusting you, believing you, that you are, are present to strengthen us, encourage us, help us. And so, Lord, we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so as I was saying, step one, you know, we admitted we are powerless. I don't know about, about you and I, about how hard that is for you to admit something like that. Um, but one of the things that I learned a long time ago, and uh, and I've shared this with you, I think with many of you before, but I'll say it again, that your best thinking brought you here. You know, so sometimes when you think about that, you know, that, that your best efforts to try to overcome whatever it is that you are challenged with, whatever it is that you're struggling with, your best efforts, your best thinking brought you here to the city mission. Now, on one case, on one hand, thank God it did. But on the other hand, it was a chance for you to look in the mirror and say, man, what, what am I doing wrong? What have I done wrong? What is it that's brought me to the place where I find myself at a mission in the part of the city of Washington? And this is why we have to admit that we are powerless. There's things in our lives that, that, that come up that, that we confront and face and we just have no control over. And if it is addiction, if it is a drug, if it is a chemical, if it is alcohol, then we then it, and it's a little bit, I would say, easier to understand how that drug or that chemical has taken over our lives. We made decisions based on that. We made decisions on how we were going to, what we were going to do today, about whether we were going to be able to have enough money to get, to buy something for the for tonight or for the day. I mean, we're making decisions based on a chemical, on a drug. We're gaming. We're scheming. We're 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 you know. Uh, conniving, we're, we're doing all these things because of something outside of ourselves. Relationships that are getting destroyed because of our drinking and drugging and other things that we have in our life. And we're always trying to figure out a way to just get to ease that just enough to keep it still connected and still do what we want to do. 
or still do what this drug or this chemical is telling us to do. That's what, and that's why it leads into unmanageability. <laughs> Our lives have become unmanageable. We have spent so much time conning other people, making them think about us in a certain way that was totally untrue. We weren't being honest. Family members, parents, wives, husbands, the community, the church, everybody thought about us in a certain way that we tried to present ourselves in order for us to be able to continue to do and be involved in, engaged in something that was outside of us, controlling us, manipulating us, and we lived in that world. So step one, admitting we are powerless over our addictions, over this other person, uh, over our career, whatever. We find ourselves getting involved in so many things and you know where it begins to control us. So step one, we admitted we're powerless and, and that our lives had become unmanageable. Manageability. We, you know, the real con, of, the real deception of, of, uh, of addiction is that we actually at times think we're managing it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I was able to keep my job. My employer doesn't know what's happening. I was able to go to work high. He didn't know it. I was able to do my job. He never got, you know, got wind of it. I was, you know, you snuck your way through. Children didn't know what you were doing. You were kind of you were living this uh, this other life that nobody knew about, and you thought you were managing. <laughs> and the whole time, your life was spiraling out of control. You didn't realize it. You didn't even look at it. You just did, you were just going by what was inside of you, pushing you, pressing you to do things to try to find balance. Eventually it catches up to you. Jail, institutions, death. You got confronted by this just not too long ago. Heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And I, you know, Randy was somebody that, you know, we love, care about. Heartbreaking. Broke my heart. I know that. And I know for some of you in here, same thing. Heartbreaking. Admitting we're powerless is only the, st it's only the first step. You know, that first step leads us right into the second step. Came to believe. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity. Came to believe. It's a process. I wish it was just an overnight thing that just, you know, you snap your fingers and done. I wish it was like that. But coming to believe is a process. We experience so many things in our life, pain, anguish, ups and downs, good things, bad things. I mean, things that just happen in our lives. But as time goes on, as we experience these things, we end up coming to believe. And sometimes it's just a small little belief. In the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 20. 23 and 24 says this. This is where Jesus was. There was a family. This, this the father who had this child who was uh, demon possessed, and Jesus came and he brought this child to Jesus and, and asked him for some help. And Jesus asked him how long has been going on, and his father described his son totally wild and uncontrollable. How many of you can relate to that? Oh my gosh. Totally 
wild and uncontrollable. I mean, it was just doing crazy stuff. Think about that. And Jesus says to him, and the father's asking Jesus, he said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. How many parents have cried out on your behalf, my behalf? How many of you are crying out for your own children on their, on their behalf? If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father, it says here, of the child, cried out and said with, te with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. How many of you can relate to that? Lord, I believe that my animal man. Help my unbelief. We operate like we live our lives like as if God doesn't even exist. It is still all on us. We still got to carry this burden. We got to carry all the anguish, carry all the pain. Because we act like he's, easy, like he's not there. He is present. And his word says this. And this is what he, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Came to believe. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity. <clears throat> How many of you know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing. Expecting different results. Insanity. We keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Thinking that you can get a different result by doing the same thing. And you know what the result's going to be. You already know it. But you're just. It just, I can just do it this one more time and I won't, I can, I can do it. I can't. The line has to be drawn in the sand. It has to be drawn. I can't do this anymore. The consequences are too great, too devastating. But unmanageability tells you That's what an unmanageability tells you. One more time. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people uh, tell me that in this work, coming out of jail, when they thought I could just do it one more time, I didn't know that we were, that we were gonna go and rob this store. What? <coughs> Some don't get that opportunity either. Step one, you admit. It's the same, it's, it's the same thing that can become when, you, when you're when you coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Not just believing in a power, but believing in a person. The person of Jesus. First step is to be able to acknowledge and admit you're a sinner. Admitting that you're a sinner. And that you cannot save yourself. How many of you heard this already in church? and chat, uh, Churches all across the country talk about it. We admit we are sinners. And we cannot save ourselves. But we acknowledge that Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us, he's the one who can save us. He can turn our lives around. He changes us from the inside out. He changes our perspective, our, our beliefs. Because we aren't, we aren't just having faith in some power. We're having faith in the power. The power. The power of Jesus Christ. And faith in him. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You need to take that with you today. If you can.
can believe all things are possible to him who believes. And it's possible. Your life can change. You can surrender. You can admit that you're powerless. You can come to believe. Came to believe. It's a process. <clears throat> the power greater than yourself can restore you to sanity. His name is Jesus. That's the power. That's the power. He can restore you to sanity. Because it is absolutely insane to think that you can continue to do it your way. That is absolutely crazy. <coughs> You've done so many different things in your life and have resulted in some horrible consequences, but you still think you can do it. That's insanity. Steps one and two so far admitting you're powerless and coming to believe in a power that's greater than yourself, than your thinking. Faith. It can protect you, it can help you, it can lift you up. You don't have to live this life any longer the way you've lived it in the past. There's a whole new life for you. But you have to come to believe. And if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. It can happen. There's countless numbers of testimonies of people where this has happened. All right, I think that's going to bring us to a close on what I have to share today. Next week, we'll talk about step, we're going to talk about step three, making a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understand it. Making a decision. Admitting you're powerless, coming to believe, making a decision. So next week's going to be a powerful <coughs> week because I'm going to challenge you to make that decision.